What is up, everybody? Welcome to a special live stream day for the Ham Radio Crash Course. I picked up a Yesu FT5DR today. And you know when they show up, that's when you got a live stream, even though I posted a video today. Nope, <laughs> we're going to do it live. <laughs> so thanks for coming out. Really do appreciate it. Oh, buddy. All right, let's dive right into this because we got a lot to talk about. That new Yesu. Everybody's been talking about that new Yesu. Speculations abound. We kind of knew what to expect. I, I think um, everybody has a pretty good idea of, of what we're getting uh, when it comes to this radio. But demonstrating it is kind of what we're going to be doing today. So I picked this up at uh, Ham Radio Outlet. It is $479, $480 basically. And the thing to keep in mind, if you remember when the FT3 came out, um, that was like 450 460 i remember so in the same ballpark um you know hey fyi um on that as far as the radio itself we're going to be looking at the manual a little bit i do want to hit one thing uh right up front um duplex just because i know i'm going to get a bunch of questions on that does not do full duplex this is the only mention of uh, duplex in the manual and looking through the radio a uh, skosh I, I didn't find anything duplex related so just keep that in mind as, as we're going forward we've also got the ac website they've got it listed as well and the major updates that it mentions are an improved speaker and ipv7 rating for waterproof as well as a new case and um, some other stuff so we'll dive into that right now i'm going to slide over to the uh to the overhead here and we're going to take a look but here they are that's not it there they are <laughs> all right so let's take a look and i am looking at the chat i will take your questions live if i don't answer the thing you're looking to find out about this radio all right so the, the thing i'll mention right up front too if you if you buy it out of uh, from hro you get this cool little snap case this is i believe exclusive to hro And that basically is the kind of newer feature with this is what it allows you to do is when it's on your belt, you can just clip it into place like that. Oop, close. There we go. That locks in. Pretty nice. I like the orange personally, but uh, there you go. Not bad. Okay. So size comparison. I put the uh, FT2 here just because it's you know part of the lineage of the radios. I want everybody to keep in mind too as you're looking at this, uh, I do have no clip on the back of this radio. So these both sit proud right though they look a little bit higher but not that bad okay um you know what you get the idea of the ft2 we'll bring it back if we need it as a reference point but ft2 is still a great radio it's just a bit older now all right most people are interested in the ft5 and obviously if you have an ft3 you're curious should i upgrade to the ft5 well here's a front look at both radios you can see let's start them up Big note, the front uh, lit buttons is very nice. I found that to be a good little upgrade um, over the FT2. The cases are different. Obviously, you heard mention of the orange buttons. The controls on the left side are the same, except the power button now also has a little orange indicator. And the buttons on the three are much flatter. I actually really like uh, the button layout right here for the PTT and the monitor and the squelch and the power. I like the way it's kind of like a trigger. But if you um, watch the interview that John Crook did with the ham radio or the coffee and ham radio guys, which, by the way, link is in the description if you'd like to watch John Crook um, in that interview, which I think he did a good job. He mentions that this came from the FT-70, but a lot of the emergency preparedness crowd or the people who wear this radio a lot, they found they would activate the PTT often. And so going to this with slightly... It's it's not as proud. This little button sticks out a little bit, but but not that much. Uh, they found that that was a better option for those that were interested. All in all, the case is much more muted, I would say. This bevel has been increased. That was one of my nits on the FT3 is that this this bevel, this bezel right here, when you go in to click, your, your finger kind of rides an edge, and you kind of have to go in straight when you click it. Not so much with this. Your kind of finger just rides right over it, and it makes it pretty easy. Um, on the top here, you can see the GPS nubbin has been greatly reduced. Sides here, 
is uh, they have seals, it's the same port configuration, although they're aligned different. So now the micro SD is down here where it was on this up here on the FT4 data port is here, mic, and then your DC. They changed this up, and I assume it's because of that IPv4 rating. Let me get a little pokey bit to get this lifted up. There we go. Uh, the seals here are much, much beefier seals now. You can see you can see here they've got ribbing on the inside uh, there that seals and really does push in really tightly. Um, and that is what's going to help give you that IPv7. Any ingress of water is, is what they're trying to prevent. IPv7 specifically in this case is going to allow it to be submergible up to one meters for up to 30 minutes. That's what this radio should achieve with uh, with that capability. So let, let's get a little closer look at it. Uh, let me brighten this up too. How do I do that? There we go. I haven't done much to this. I just pulled it out of the box and decided to put my call sign in and I think I set one frequency which is just two meter simplex. The big thing, and, and I'll get right to this, I don't think we need to go a full hour on this one to be honest with you because I think um, I think there isn't much to say different, and I've and I've done a fairly exhaustive review of the FT3, but there are some major things here that I think you you want to hear. So first, uh, let me go ahead and put the antenna on. Let me go back to simplex, and we'll go to simplex as well on here. And I'm just going to crank the volume. This is already cranked, and I'm going to hit the hit the monitor button, and I'm going to hold it up to the microphone. So this is this is the audio out of the FT2. I'm sorry, FT3. Just monitor, just white noise on, on simplex, okay? Here's the FT5. Crank that volume all the way up. Here we go. Notice any difference in sound? It is louder. Uh, ridiculously louder? No, not not exactly ridiculous, but it's it's definitely on the louder side, which is which is nice. You can also change the display, but display wise, pretty much the same. You can see there, pretty similar. A couple of things I was curious about, and we're going to go right into that. Is we're going to go into uh, APRS, so we're going to go to the message list here. And I was curious about what's different. So go to message list. A little bit different. Nope, same, pretty much. So if I want to create a message, we're going to go to message edit. Yeah. Pretty similar for APRS. Uh, let's see, a couple of questions coming in. It was a push. So Eric Fries says, does it still get stuck in transmit when running APRS? I never got mine stuck in transmit. You got stuck in transmit? Were you doing something? I'm curious what uh, what you did. Okay. Um, screen wise, let me let me do this. Do I have the screen bright all the way? Let me go back. Oh, there's uh, a <laughs> there's no back button anymore. Oh, okay. So we're here forever. There it is. Now the back button went from the upper left to the lower right. Got to keep that in mind. Let's go to display. LCD brightness. That's it. It's at the max. Hmm. Can you tell a difference in brightness? Oh, let me make sure you're not glary. I heard that the screen was a bit updated. Any noticeable difference on the brightness of the screen? Interesting. They look very similar.
Oh yeah, let's get that red display color. That was mentioned as well, so we'll do that. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, I would say so, Dr. Sasso. He says that the five looks a bit richer, maybe better contrast. I, I think that is true. Chris also says the five probably has more um, modernized screen technology. I think that is also likely. Lost receive if it was on the charging cradle. Oh, no, it does not. So I, I did. Um, so by the way, same accessories. They run off the same batteries or very similar. Actually, these are identical. And they use the same drop-in charger. That's an accessory you have to buy, but I highly recommend it for these radios. It's a fast charge, so it, it makes it very quick. Um, there is. So now I'm curious. Let me go back. I wanted to see if there was any special settings in here that I that I didn't see on the three. These all are the same. Okay. Now, one thing that I I noted. So let me go back to V A V A. Um, I'm sorry, V F O. So we're back in BFO. If I just click this, it brings up the buttons to uh, to change. Now you got to hold it down, and then it comes up, which actually is is handy because I would constantly accidentally click the screen and bring that up if I was in VFO mode. So that that's just a bit of a change. Let's hop down for an audio check. Uh, burp, 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 burp. Well, hey, buddy. What's going on here? TX Auto FM is just a change from the auto button that did the same thing. Pretty much the same display. I leave it in auto generally. But now it doesn't, it doesn't say auto. It says TX Auto. Okay, so... So I used to be able to hit band... And it would cycle through all the crazy bands that the radio could receive on. What am I doing wrong? <laughs> uh, does the orange clip work with the three? Uh, no, there's a little hump here. The clip will not work with the three. There's no hump on the body of the radio, which would be right past the clip. So see that little hump there? Satellite cable are capable in the sense that, yes, you can talk on uh, satellite, but it does not do full duplex. So it will not receive on the uh, downlink frequency as you transmit on the uplink. I'm going to turn that off because that's going to bug me real fast. Let's go to display. Where was it? Okay, now it'll be equally bright. So once upon a time, what you do is just click the band button, and you could go through um, all the bands that you wanted. Now it just says all up there. So I'm wondering if I... Oh, that's why, because I'm an idiot, and I had it in memory mode. That was me. My bad. Let me go to FM... Mm. That's not what I wanted. So here's the audio, audio test on FM station doing classical music. Oh, 
I haven't hooked it to an external antenna yet. We'll do that right now. Not bad. Okay, let's get it on the power meter and do a power test. Okay, going into a dummy load. Grab my power meter. Again, not a uh, not a lab grade power meter, but you understand. I would say that the audio is noticeably better, but not ridiculously better. If that makes sense, I hope that makes sense to everybody. Looking in the chat for questions. Uh, the bottom, so the the clip clips into the the spots where the battery connects. So no, it it, it would it would do it. It would sock it in here because you go you go right in here. So it's actually the body of the radio. It's the it's the nubbin on the top that it needs to lock in, and that nubbin doesn't exist on the two. You know, good words like nubbin. The model that we're looking at is the new FT5DR. Uh, yes, I will pull up the GPS screen. Let's do that. So, there's that. <laughs> now we just have to figure out how to do it on the, uh, the FT5. There we go. Same screen. Are you seeing that? No, you're not. What is doing that? Hold on. Let me do this. Did that fix it? Same display screen. Interesting, though, there's a button on the FT2. That button has been replaced now, I believe, with this PMG button, because everything else is the same. The VNM is there. The ENB is there. The band is there. The menu used to be... Okay, so menu... <laughs> back has moved here. Menu, you held down display or clicked the F button. Now, uh, there, if you click F uh, menu, that takes you back, right? I'm assuming you could have hit the uh, the B there, the back button. Okay. Let's do a uh, test. GPS sat screen. Now tap the screen to show the uh, sat string. I don't think I have. Do I have? Oh, I got GPS lock. Okay, hold on. Let's go back to that display real quick. So, they've got, interesting, so it's receiving signal string differently. Can you see that? I'm going to keep adding shims until we get a good uh, display without, there we go. So the GPS antenna slightly, the signals are different. Interesting. It looks like the five can see more sats. Yep, I would agree. Maybe better coverage, maybe different antenna, likely different hardware. Okay, let's go back to... Okay, we're going to go to... Um, back, to, it doesn't really matter. We're going to go to two meter simplex. I am on a dummy load right now. And if you remember from the last time we did a power test, the what we're aiming for is about 5 watts. And sure enough, it's smack dab on 5 watts. Come on, buddy. There we go. Not a problem. So we'll flip that over to 40, or sorry, 70 centimeters. And it's at 4, 4 watts on 70 centimeters. Cool. All right, let's clip her into the uh, 
the vertical outside and we'll go back Squelch is a bit high. Oh, that's why, because we're in DN mode, so we'll change that. There you go. Okay, I'm going to just set the squelch back on. Uh, I could put the clip. Could I put the clip on? Durr. Will that work? Does that do it? Uh, a little bit. Uh, that light's still kind of in the way. Is that better? Yeah, there you go. that's a bit. No. Gosh. Just want to do this without the glare. Actually, the clip doesn't help. <laughs> clip not helping. There you go. So the ban button, when the, well, I just lost him. That was weird. What's going on with the antenna here? Come on. You said the volume is better. Is the volume a point where it is no longer considered a problem by being too quiet? Um, I, I think it's probably right on the borderline of that. I still believe that you need to go listen to this. Um, you need to go listen to this in person. If you get a friend who gets one, go go listen to it in person because it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be something that you, you want to... To hear for yourself. <laughs> uh, I am going to go ahead and and again let's let's um let's see what's the best way to do this. Let's flip it over here again. Cranked volume. Oh come on. Oh yeah yeah. That is a really tight BNC. I don't like this adapter. This adapter is weirding me out. Hold on. Um, I will, I would use the new clip myself because what does the new clip allow you to do? The new clip allows you to have, um, batteries ready to go. Oh my God. <laughs> batteries ready to go that you can swap out because the, the thing with these batteries, remember, is the clip is attached to the battery on these, uh, on these JSU batteries. So you would have to have multiple batteries with clips versus you could just pack a, a regular, you know, bunch of the regular batteries if you're going out for a weekend or whatever, you know, a couple of days. Yeah, I think that co that connector was a problem. There's a there's a, a healthier tone to it. It doesn't sound like it's overloading the speaker. So again, here's the two in comparison to the five we'll do again for audio. Okay, that was the two. And back to the five. It doesn't um it doesn't feel like it's working as hard the speaker if that makes sense. The quality sounds better on the speaker. Even though of course we're talking about we're talking about a, a ham radio speaker right with with narrow or wide FM in some cases. So, yeah, it's uh marginal.
I don't think there's any difference uh, memory or, or functionality wise for APRS just having looked at it briefly I will go in here and do a beacon transmit the button has moved beacon transmit oh I've got to be on APRS it helps if you do that so we'll go to all right Do I have this one set up? I think I do. Let's take a look at what APRS looks like. Also, I'm going to turn this down a bit. Pretty much the same settings. We'll go into the modem and turn it on. There we go. And it started immediately. Yep. It does support the USB camera. Yeah, red is just a setting. I, you can make it red, blue, or, or white. White is the standard. Um, good question. Um, so the, the mic is actually... It says mic right here, but I don't know if it's the two holes or connected to it. It looks like it now has a, a bit of... So the mic hole on the two, for reference, is right here. Now it has a little plastic cover that says mic. So Mr. K5VOP, it's not much more expensive than when the 3 came out. It is it is louder. It is it is significant is the wrong word. And you know what? Let's let's do this. I've got a I've got a much better way of doing this. So here's a here's a DB app for my phone. Now we really need to stack everything up. Okay, you can see that. So I'm going to hold the radio here. We're going to go volume up. Radio's right next to it. Okay, so you can see how far away I am. About 113. Okay, let's switch them. I'm about the same far away. I think I'm about the same. Oh, interesting. Oh, there you go. Hey, I know Terry. Maybe it just sounds better. Is that a thing? Makes sense. 
I think the audio tone, yeah, well, Ethan. Ethan is saying audio tone was more his problem, which, okay, I can see that. Um, I personally didn't have a big issue with the, the three. Yeah, I know Terry. I used to talk to Terry a lot on the, uh, on the repeater there. I'm just using a dB meter on my phone. This is a better tone. Terry's actually got a decent signal, so we'll wait for him to come back, and then we'll... Correct. It's, it's two separate independent lights, so this is the B channel and the A channel. So he's he's full. He was a uh, full on the S on the S meter there. He's maxed out. Little scratchy, and I don't think that was the the speaker showing that. I think that was uh that was him. I think it sounds better than the uh than the two definitely. That was my big my big item. So the big changes right again because you know there's really only so much I can talk about this. The big changes are the case is different. The screen I feel is again a little better contrast to the screen. A lot of this is software, by the way. Button layout is different. The mic is placed in the same location, but now has a bit of a covering. The speaker is improved. The question really is, though, do you think it's improved? You you should go listen to these and and get um, a better a better idea of what you think with it. So, cool. We're getting APRS messages from the Long Beach repeater. I need to okay so here's something we got to do actually this is something we need to do now that now that i remembered okay aprs can we just mute all the aprs because i'm in california and i'll just sit here and just be slaughtered with aprs so let's go in here we're going to go to message flash we're going to change messages can be four seconds that's fine i want that off i want bln off Let's mute. Okay, here we go. On. Okay. So you still get the we're still getting the pop-ups for the stations. And we want to um, make sure that we can get that beep silence too. Because the beep I don't mind the pop-ups, it's the beeps that really bug me. Because it's just it's always beeping all the time on my car in my car, on any of my APRS radios. And you get in a race condition where you're like receiving APRS and it stops you from. Um, okay, so this is where you go, and I'm not going to do this on the uh, on the show. I leave weather on. I I usually turn off the position. In fact, I've already done this with the FT3, so you can go back and look at my APRS deep dive on this. Same rules apply here. Same things. These are all the same um, options. I don't want the tone. There you go. Good. Okay, so we can do that at least, which I, I expected it to do that. But let's see. Hey, dude's in the house. What's up, dude? Oh, I see, I see the uh, throat in water. Hmm. Hmm. So everybody keep in mind, if you, if you remember, and, and dude was in that, that chat with John Crook, by the way. It's linked in the video description so you can go watch that interview. Good interview. John mentions that the reason why they had to go from the, the two to the three is because of chip shortages, just like many other industries are facing, including other ham radio companies. The, the chips that are in here became either completely unavailable or unobtainium level pricing. So they had to redesign some of it. And if they're going into the hood to change a lot of internal circuitry, then why not just do a facelift? Because it was, what, three, four years old when this came out? About that long? So... That's early for, for a ham radio facelift, but um, I, I think it's great that they changed the speaker. 
They added the the better um, IPV rating. So again, technically, this should be able to handle one meter uh, at for 30 minutes without um, having a major problem. Three to the five because there is already an FT4. It's the um, it's the simple dual band radio. So good question on that. I don't think that's the case though. But why don't we go look? So we are on. Let's go change the band. Uh, let's get out of that. See, those are weather stations. Those are the only ones I want popping up. Okay, so I think here we could go 0, 1, 4, 0, oh, 4, 0, 7, 4. And then if we change the... Get out of here. I got to get weather turned off. The only mode is AM. So you can't do um, can't do single side band, not supported. Can you use generic earbuds and can it charge with USB? Ooh, that's a good question. Charge with USB. Hmm, I'll have to test that. I don't know, and I don't have the. Uh, so it it takes a DC input. Um. There is a data port, but to be honest, I don't want to throw a, a, a USB charger on it and see if it works. Actually, wait. Um, give me give me one second. Hold on. Let me let me switch back to me and, and try this. I do have the USB plugged in, and the USB is plugged into my to my computer because I was um, checking out if it if it does anything. So let me let me switch back to me real fast here. Okay. So USB cable right here. This is the USB that came with it. No, no indicator that it's charging. Okay, come on. Come on. Come on. There it is. You see the upper right-hand corner or left, depending on how you're seeing this video. No charge indicator. The uh, speaker with the red X on it is implying that it's muted because of squelch. So, And, yes, the green screen is is killing that a bit. So, band scope. Yes, it does have the band scope. They they didn't get rid of any of it. Again, uh, I don't think there's any changes to features. The only thing that the only uh, new feature was the uh, touch and go, which we'll we'll take a look at right now. So let's bring up the band scope too, since it was uh, since we asked or someone asked. Doot, doot, doot. Did I miss it? I likely missed it. The the <laughs> the screen is slightly changed. Okay, scope is blocked out because I have to be in VFO mode. Yes. Come on. There we go. Now the scope I'm told has uh it's it's broader now or wider. So if we go into the settings, we should be able to increase that band scope size. Come on. There we go. Uh, part of that is the um, APRS is getting in the way. When I click something and it's not doing it, it's because it, it's literally receiving APRS nonstop when you're down here. I do like the two lights. Oh, where is band scope? I'm in the wrong place. Is it under signaling? No, that's pager and tones. I will remind everybody who has these, um, there is a lot. <laughs> there is a lot. No, that's not going to be it. Oh, USB camera, Bluetooth device list, Bluetooth audio. So you have Bluetooth control and Bluetooth audio. We, we can test that too. Um, Aqua Tracks one two three. Not the not the speaker upgrade. The changes to the face and then the IPV rating could not be done in firmware. Maybe some of the other stuff could, but I don't think so. Band scope. There it was. Jeez, I overcomplicated that. So now you can go to seventy nine. I believe John said that was new. So let's go back to that band scope. But I don't think so. Now that I'm looking at it. 
<laughs> I'm gonna mute the. You know what? I gotta turn off the APRS. This is gonna drive me nuts. Yeah. So anybody who who is curious about what APRS is like, if it's just nonstop all the time, now you know. Okay. I'm also gonna get off that frequency. Go back to the primary here. Go to scope. There we go. So now you got 79 channels. Let's see if um, we've got that. I think you do. Yeah, it's it's still 79 channels. Same. If I throw an antenna on here real quick. Oh, look at that noise. <laughs> uh, band scope's going to be slow on these radios. It's just kind of how it is. So we should just be able to slide over. And if we change. So we're in DN mode, so it's going to mute. So I've got to go back, change the mode to, we'll do smart FM or auto switching FM. I'm going to go back into the scope. Something's there. There you go. Oh. Whoa. This is a, this is a kid friendly show. Relax. <laughs> it's like three F-bombs in one sentence. Okay, so we found a repeater. <laughs> Good. <laughs> that is because of noise in my shack on the, the rubber duck. This is also ambient noise floor. The, the bottom blue and then the peaks. The peaks are actual signal. Um, this is noise, just noise in my shack. So again, here's the. I'm doing what thing, country I'm boast? Great Glen, Glen Eagles, and Glen Finch. That's in the spirit of ham radio. A little bit of scotch. I think so. All right. Was that 80 meters? Yeah, maybe it was 80 meters. Oh, was that 435? I think I was 435. All right. So what's left to talk about? Oh, the um, touch and go. So that's this PMG, which we don't have anything set up on it yet. So if I, it's not going to let me do anything because I don't have anything there yet. So let's go to memory. We're going to go to, okay, good. Let's do that again. Memory. Hmm. Okay, it's already on there. So I do have a group assigned with two meter simplex in it. So that turns on your active monitor if you hold it down. Um, and basically you, you do the same kind of thing with a group. This is for people that have, you know, you've got somebody that has another one of these around or an FT3 or something like that that, that can do the GM function where they can talk to each other. Um, that still exists. The GM is just now in the uh, Wires X button. Um, let's see. This, though, you should be able to... Active monitor mode. Yeah, that's fine. I'll leave it on smart. Likely, you need to have this fully um, set up in a group with, with multiple... Um, can you use AirPods? Well, shoot, do I have my AirPods here? I do. Okay, so here's AirPods. Mm. 
Okay, so we got them in pairing mode. So let's go to Bluetooth and we'll go option, Bluetooth. I think you might have to do Bluetooth audio, but we'll start here. On, we'll do search. So this is still in pairing mode. There's my AirPods. So I'll just stop, connect. <laughs> I believe this worked okay, kind of, on the... Uh, I've got one in my ear. It's trying, maybe. Not connected, womp womp. Didn't like it. Let's try that again. Yeah, it, 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 that's, that's right. It would connect, but it, it didn't work right. It wasn't something that was worth the, uh, the effort. What if we're doing this wrong? So let's disconnect. Let's stop. Let's go back. What if we need to be in Bluetooth audio? What's down here? Auto? Fix auto. Okay, that's just a setting for Bluetooth. Okay, let's try another Bluetooth dongle. Hold on. Did it just connect? What did it connect to? No. Okay. So <laughs> let's let's see if we can connect another Bluetooth dongle to it. Okay. Is it in pairing mode? Let's see if we can search now. Okay. We have to. There we go. I why why all the caps, Louis J? I understand that you have to have the ICOM dongle. I want to know if it'll work with the I'm sorry, the Yesu dongle. I want to know if it'll work with the ICOM because it sees it. And yes, I do have the the Yesu dongle. I am not a huge fan of it. Okay, it's connected. Hey, look at that. So. What does that mean? Well, let's see. Let's go back. Oh. I did hear it. So it, it's going it's going through the Bluetooth dongle into the speaker. It's not loud. Um, I'm, that's because more of this guy's problem, I think, than anything, this little speaker. But yeah, so right now we're connected the the ICOM. I don't think it will PTT, though. Um, I think if you push this, yeah, it will. Okay, so here, pro tip, by the way, um, this does work on the three. You have to push the power button, and there you go. KI6NAZ, test. So, yeah, <laughs> bet you didn't know that, did you? <laughs> I discovered that when I when I bought this and I was playing around with the Yesu dongle and I was curious when I was doing that wedding, um, that wedding video, I wanted to know what dongles I could use because I'm not the biggest fan of um, of using a uh, the Yesu dongle, to be honest. Do, 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 do. Yeah, so Louie, there you go. You don't need to yell in caps. It will connect to the uh, ICOM dongle. Okay. What else? What else? What else? We covered the touch and go. We covered the speaker. I think the speaker is a is a win. Um, I think we just got to do it, guys. You know, I've been touching the screen. It's, it's a little it's a little must. Um, hmm. Let's uh let's let's take this BNC connector off first before we start talking about this.
Okay, so this is the, I think it's the stock one. If not, the, the two has the same. It's the same antenna, by the way, guys, that, that comes with the, the two and the three on the five. Um, how does it feel in the hand? How would you, well, let me put the, let me put the rubber duck back on the, uh, the three. So here's a, a view comparison. And again, there is no clip on this. Pretty similar size. Obviously, the PTT bar here is different, which we knew about. They have these little rubber bumpers on the bottom, which is kind of nice. It does have a bit of a... It kind of comes out, it feels like. I don't know if that's actually true. It just looks like it does. And then the IO on the side is different as well. The uh, layout. Uh, good question, Aquatrax. Let's let's test that. But before we do that, well, no, you know what? Let's test that first before we start getting really crazy. Uh, yeah, so that, that little covering is the, you pop that open and there's a capacitor behind there. So you could Mars mod it. And it's the same click to lock in. It seats on the bottom with the battery. Yeah, the screen got real dirty. I think I got to clean this. Yeah, why don't we clean it? Yep. <laughs> She's fine. <laughs> so pretty good. It's it's on. It's trying to connect to Bluetooth right now. Oh, cheese. <laughs> so much for the, uh, so much for the, the, I was trying to get a cool shot of it sitting in the water like that, but that didn't pay out. Will the, th uh, I'm not going to test the 3D. <laughs> the 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 FT5 specifically says that it is IPv7 rated, which again, just to 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 reiterate, will take a one meter dunk, um, f up to a one meter dunk for up to thirty minutes. So I, I mean, if, if you are kind of a, a hard use person and you need a radio that can take a dip, and has a better speaker. And you like the three, or you're you're would thinking about buying the three? Maybe you have a two. Somebody earlier in the chat was saying they have a one, and they might be looking to update. Um, you can't fault that. So, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think? I will. Uh, let me pop myself back in here. <laughs> Let's do this. Does that work? Boop, boop, boop. Oh, hey, look at me. I'm behind the uh, the chat. That's fun. <laughs> yeah, Matt's gonna go buy one now because he knows it's submersible. So just for um, just for the fun of it, I'm gonna christen this one with a um, little Oktoberfest. So there you go. <laughs> So there you go. Pour one out for my FT5. That would be. Uh, oh yes, G good question. It's beer, so it's B R B E R E because it's Oktoberfest. Oh yeah, we went a full hour. Um, so questions. I'll take questions. 
I think everybody knows that I was already a fan of the FT3DR. I, I hope everybody understands that, that I, I made multiple videos saying that the FT3DR was kind of my go-to. Um, beer is mostly water. Yes, I appreciate that the alcohol is, is thinner, but I, I FT3 was always my go-to radio, the one I carried, largely because of APRS, straight up. I love the APRS. I frankly don't use the digital modes, to be honest, that much, whether it's DMR, um, or Yesu System Fusion, whatever. I, I really don't find myself using them that often. I do use APRS when I'm outside. Battery life, unknown at this point. I'm going to charge it up tonight. I don't know why I have my AirPod in. I look like a jerk. Um, I'm going to charge it up tonight, and I'll start it tomorrow. I have a live stream scheduled for tomorrow. We're going to be talking about patron picks. What do you do when the power goes out? with ham radio. Uh, so that should be fun. I'm going to come at it from a couple of different angles. Lewis J, are you missed the whole beginning of the show. The audio is, so from the dB meter on my phone, the audio is very similar in the intensity, but arguably the quality of the FT3DR or FT5 is better than the FT3DR. Let's see. My APRS gets stuck in transmit, but other than that, I've never gotten mine stuck. Sorry about that. Coming in late, late night on ham. Oh, that's right. Coming up. That's right. You guys weren't on the schedule. So yeah, everybody go watch Jason. I'm going to head out of here. Uh, why is it bubbling? Because that's beer. <laughs> okay, everybody go watch late night. Uh, thanks so much, Ethan. I, I appreciate it. Oh, will it a Bree? We may have to... No, it won't. That, the hump is still going to get in the way. Guys, Ham Radio 2.0, go watch them. I'm going to head out of here. I hope this was helpful for some of you who are deciding on it. Again, if you have an FT3, unless you need that IPV rating, um, I don't think it matters that much. Uh, a couple of the other features might be handy I know for, for a fact that radio waves is harmful. If you are coming to... If you want a top-of-the-line radio for a handheld, it's, it's pretty good. Okay. Guys, thanks so much. I'll talk to you tomorrow. I'll be live again. See ya. Go watch Amradio 2.0.